Hi, Jeffrey. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Ryan? Doing wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me today. Of course, of course. So your new film, you're serving as producer till death do us part. Yes. Uh, before we dive into that, I kind of want to travel back in time with you. I want to go back to New Line Cinema. Bob Shea, where you started with New Line Cinema for, I believe, 11 years. You were yes. there. Um, yes. So it was almost, I know all of, you know, horror fans, you know, I think they know New Line Cinema is the house that Freddie built. And I think in yes. a way we can say that maybe your career is kind of what Freddie built. Because I know New uh yeah. A Nightmare on Elm Street was your a big inspiration for you. Absolutely. Can you, tell, can you tell me about how it was working with Bob Shea and New Line back in those days? Absolutely, absolutely. And just just before we dive into all this great stuff, I am wearing my uh, I support the WGA strike pen. So I just want everyone to know that this was an independent film that was financed outside the studio and is being distributed outside of the studio system. So, um, you know our whole team is in solidarity with all the unions that are striking and hope we get a fair deal. So just wanted to lead off with that. Um, Very good. And, um, and then, yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I, there's a new Robert England um, documentary that's on and they interviewed me for it. And I, I basically say that, that my career is kind of, I owe it all to Bob Shea and Nightmare on Elm Street. And that's because, you know, I was a little kid East, living in Eastern Kentucky um, and I saw the movie with a friend of mine um, who's no longer with us, unfortunately, but uh, we watched it at a, at a drive in, but we were too poor to pay to go to see it in the drive in. So he sat on his dad's uh, pickup truck and turned the CB on and watched a double feature of Alone in the Dark and Nightmare on Elm Street. And Nightmare on Elm Street just blew me away. Like it was a second movie. So I wasn't expecting, you know, that much from it because the we had a grainy TV. So the, the previews that we saw on our TV looked a little cheesy. So yeah. I was like, yeah, I don't know if the, I think the it's, I don't know if it's going to be that good. And the movie just terrified me. It, you know, it was one of the smartest films I'd seen, um, had one of the strongest final girls in Heather Langenkamp's Nancy that I'd ever seen. Um, the special effects were amazing. And I was a huge reader of Fangoria. Uh, so I kind of had studied up on it and I, wrote a prequel idea. Again, this is 14 year old, you know, yeah. little hillbilly that did not know anything about the movie business. <laughs> and I sent it to Bob Shea and he returned it saying we don't take unsolicited material. And I wrote him back and resent it. And I was like, excuse me, sir, but I watched three of your movies, which probably cost a couple of bucks but yeah. <laughs> at the time. <laughs> but I'm like, I think you can take, take five minutes to read my, my, my idea. So he actually read it and he got back to me um and he was very encouraging and he put me in touch with his assistant joy man was who was kind of his lifelong assistant on the east coast of new line and from age 14 to 19 when i went to college um in kentucky i would write them way too much actually and, and it call yeah i was a kid i didn't know anything um, yeah. and i would call joy um sometimes regularly sometimes i'd call her collect and she would take the call <laughs> in new york and they just really encouraged me um, and sent me scripts and sent me, you know, stuff for movies. And just it was very encouraging. So when I was 19, I went to New York to study acting and I got an internship at New Line Cinema and started getting some background work and got an agent. And the internship, you know, they did say, well, if, you know, if you do decide to stay, you know, we'll continue this and maybe, you know, we can start, you know, paying you. Um, and I was like, hell yeah, I'm staying yeah. at New Line. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I loved the studio then. And, and, you know, the thing that was great about the studio back then, and this is kind of the stuff that's changed over the years is, you know, first of all, it was run by someone who was passionate about filmmaking. And this was the heyday of New Line. This was like when Mike DeLuca was there, yeah. who was somebody who was, again, a film lover that kind of Bob Shea brought, brought in and, uh, you know, under his wing. And they love film so much, so they would take risks on stuff. So they did the first, you know, they, everybody thinks Black Panther is the first Marvel, the black, you know, Marvel superhero, but it was actually Blade. Yeah. So New Line did Blade and they would do movies like House Party and The Mask and Dumb and Dumber. And these were movies before Jim Carrey took off that people were like, you know, who's, you know, who's going to pay to see okay. this? And, yeah. and they, they knew there was an audience for stuff that was original out there. And so they, they had a lot of big hits that came out and they took probably one of the biggest, you know, chances with doing like the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So it was a studio back then where 
people, you know, they were run by people who were creatives, who understood how creatives worked and respected all the creatives from the writers, yeah. actors, directors, um, and really knew if you put original stuff out there, you'd find an audience for it. And I think that that's why the studio flourished. Um, and I, you know, I got spoiled, obviously, because I thought that that was the way the industry was going to kind of work forever. Yeah. Uh, and it's changed um, to where kind of things are driven by like IPs and sequels and remakes and reboots because people don't want to take risks um, and don't want to pay, <laughs> pay yeah. the people that actually do the work. Um, so it, it was an amazing time to work at a studio and also see how things were made behind the scenes because it took me i mean it it you know it people you under, under it, that you that's and i'll tie this into our movie in a second but you know the thing is like it does you know take about if you read an overnight success story or you read about a movie getting made you'll if you dig a little deeper into it you always hear it's usually been in the works for about 10 years where the person has been trying to get it made yeah. you know through different companies people will buy it companies merge and get rid of it so you know, I had a, several scripts that I'd written at New Line that got passed on and for good reason, like I was a new writer and I certainly needed to improve my my, my craft. And um, I hooked up with Craig Perry and Warren Zide who worked on um, American Pie and they had a first look deal at New Line. So, you know, knowing the business, I'm like, well, I think I, this one I should bring in with producers attached and not just myself. Yeah. So I was being very strategic and, and Craig Perry has been a wonderful shepherd for this franchise or uh, for the final destination franchise. Yeah. But it's funny because he had discovered Sean William Scott on American Pie and was like, you got to bring this this kid in. He's going to be a star. And it's funny because I just read, you know, where Sean William Scott just came out and said, you know, he's paid like $10,000 for American Pie. I read Pie. the same thing. Yeah. So it's, you know, this industry is wonderful in that there is a sense of community and things come full circle. Um, but again, you can see just the change of it over the years. But um, one of the things in, that we can, we, but that I love about Timothy, and I've worked with him on several projects. He did my, or I, we, he did my, he, I did his first horror film. I should say it that way. Like um, he did the Final Wish that I co-wrote okay. with um, with two amazing writers, and um, and it was his first horror film. And um, he was persistent with me at first because I get a lot of people that that I don't know like kind of hitting me up. Yeah. saying hey would you look at my project and it it's you know i don't have an assistant so it's i can't really i'm sure it can be overwhelming i'm sure there's a it's lot a, it's overwhelming and there's some legality stuff yeah but you know tim is very persistent which is one of the things i love about him and and then he just sent me some clips from some of his movies and i was like holy crap this stuff looks beautiful like this guy knows what he's doing so you know i sat down and we went out to, for coffee and by the end of the not even the end of it, 15 minutes into it, I was like sold on him. And he's like, uh, we're making this in like three months. And I'm like, yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll wait to hear back from you in five years. Um, yeah. but no, he, he, he did. And that's one of the things that I love about working with him. And, 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 you know, we did another horror movie together called The Call. And he called me about Till Death uh, do his part. And again, he's just one of these guys, like when he says, hey, Jeff, I'm going to be making a movie within the next couple of months. I'm like, yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah. And I love working with him. Um, and, you know, that's that that's a rarity. Like, this is not the norm in, in this business is, you know, someone who when they set their mind on making something, they hook or by hook or by crook, they get it made. Yeah, and it always turns out to be a really fun movie. And he gets amazing. I got to work with Lynn Shea on the on uh, the final wish. Yeah. Uh, I got to work, rework with Michael Welch, who was in my Day of the Dead remake, and and who's just a wonderful person. Got to work with Spencer Law. Got, you know, he brought like, and then on the second one, he brought Tobin Bell in, um, and we worked yeah. with Lee and Tobin together, and met a whole wonderful new slew of, of young actors. But um, yeah, uh, it's just it, it's always it's always a a fun fun adventure with Timothy because he's always got such a specific vision on things and knows what he wants. And you can kind of tell one of his films when you look at it because he works with the same DP, Pablo Diaz, a lot. Um, but he's worked in all kinds of genres. But I love to, I, I love that I got him. He's got the horror bug now. Yeah. Uh, and this movie definitely um, is fun and has a lot of action in it. 
uh, but he does not. He does not skimp on the blood. And <laughs> no, I know he doesn't. I, he doesn't, and I <laughs> he love doesn't. it because he's great. Because he started off with a final wish, where you know he was he was, you know, going for the more you know, just the suspense and dread of the horror. And I was like, you know, yeah. people love the blood too. It's kind um, of tiptoeing a little <laughs> bit, yeah. yeah. And you can see it in the final in the in the in the call, like he he up the blood quota, but it's not gratuitous. It's like fun. Yeah. Like I think we both have the same thing where we want to entertain people with projects, and um, so the blood's. It, it, it's not like mean spirited, like yeah. torture, you know, like where you're sitting there, like feeling like you're watching somebody being tortured for like an hour and a half. It's, it's, it's really just fun over the top in some, some areas. Um, yeah. So again, this, this isn't a horror movie per se, but I think it's a splattery action movie with suspense that will definitely appeal to horror fans. No, most definitely. And it has a little bit of comedy. Oh, in yeah. there a little bit too so that was it's just uh i think it's just like this melting pot of every genre mixed in and everybody's going to have a piece of it i think everybody's going to enjoy it because there is definitely something for everyone in this film i i agree and you know uh chad and shane are the screenwriters on this um and you know the, again they they did a great job of you know having a nice strong story um and one of the things that timothy's good with as well as he brings his kind of twisted sense of humor to stuff and he lets his actors he lets his actors play um yeah. he has things that he wants a specific way so it's not like a you know an ad lib free for all but when you have an actor or actress come in and they want to try to do this or try to do that if he thinks it's cool he's like totally open to hear it and um you know uh poncho is is amazing in the film yeah and there's a couple of scenes in there that are hysterical that were his idea and Timothy's like, I don't know if we should do that to you. And Poncho's like, I want you to do that to me. And Tim's like, all right. And it works. And there's a couple of scenes, and you probably know which ones I'm talking about. Um, uh, one's in the trailer where they kick him into a pile of boxes. And that stuff, yeah. just, it's just character stuff that the actor came up with. Uh, you know, and, and that's what's great. I think that energy comes across, you know, in, in the movie. And, and, and Natalie, our lead, is like a former ballerina and she wanted to do her own stunts and you know we're mindful of safety on sets of course but i've certainly been on a lot of sets where you know if, the, if you have a studio or production company there they're like no 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 you can only you know she can swing at this guy but she can't do this or he can do this tape. Yeah. He can't do that and um again safety paramount but in this movie like natalie is just so i mean she just uh, the stuff that she did like just physically and like fighting wise, I was like, ever after every take, I'd be like, "Are you okay?" And she's like, "Yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah. Fine. I'm like just checking." Yeah, what are you talking about? Yeah, when I had <laughs> I had spoken with her uh, last week, and I I told her that the fighting scenes, like they were, you know, you kind of when you're reviewing a movie, you kind of look at it from a different lens, you know, when you're critiquing it. And I told her, I'm like, these fight scenes were legit. Like, and I said, was that was you? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah, it's impressive. And just again, like as, as a producer on something when you're on set and, you know, Johnny Cleveland is, was the other producer on this. When you're a producer on, on something like this, you, you, you do kind of worry. That's your job to worry about your talent and your crew. Yeah. Um, but then I, at one point I was just like, I, I know Timothy's not going to let her do something that's going to hurt her. And I trust her judgment on her, what she can do. But yeah, we yeah. had some great, I mean, the, the groomsmen were all, you know, a lot of them were stuntmen, um, but they got a chance to act and show their personalities. Um, you know, um, Orlando and Cam aren't, you know, stuntmen, they're, they're actor actors. Yeah. But, um, and, you know, Cam is just so delicious as like the, the main, you know, the groom, you know, the yeah. groomsmen, you know, the, are the best man um and i got and to meet just that sense of humor with him it yeah. was just it was just it was well played yeah it was and i could tell when i was watching it i'm like i bet it was so much fun on set behind the scenes with these guys it just looked like everybody's having a good time they were it was it was really a blast and i think that energy comes across in the in the movie as well like you you never want to work on a movie where people are miserable yeah. and the thing with tim's movies 
you know, uh, uh, you know, I know like, you know, making independent films is hard and you do have time crunches. And the good thing with Timothy is he, again, he has the movie in his head. So he knows yeah. he doesn't waste a lot of time. Like, you know, like taking, doing eight takes of something. He, he knows, well, I need this thing to connect here and this. So he knows on a technical level what he wants and creatively what he wants. Um, but the, the cast, you know, has a, such a fun time, I think in the films that we've done, uh, because they get to, they get a chance to explore a little bit, you know, like yeah. to dive into the material and, and bring their interpretation. I know when we've worked with Lynn in the past too, like, you know, she's just an icon, but she loves, you know, she, it doesn't matter what type of film she's doing. It doesn't matter if it's a studio film or an indie film, she brings the same level of 100% commitment to like understanding her character, um, knowing the motivation and she'll r read things into the subtextual stuff into the script that maybe we intend or maybe we don't like we always if it works out really well we say we intended it so but, um, <laughs> but um, yeah this I mean it really and you know again this was just such a fun movie and you know I'm, I'm it's it's hard for indie films to get get a theatrical release at all so the fact that we're getting getting one um and it, it's coming out August 4th is is just really really thrilling really thrilling and no, that is fantastic. Um, nice. We have to wrap it up, unfortunately. Oh, I mean, it's no a problem. lot of fun. Um, but yeah, just like you said, it's going to be right there with the Meg 2, with Barbie, the Haunted Mansion, all those films, and you're going to have your independent right there, which I yeah. think is fantastic. So definitely support indie film, and yes. um, you won't be disappointed if you go to see this. It's, it's so much fun. So much fun. It is. And thank you again. It's, it was a pleasure. Of and I course. hope we can do it again soon. Absolutely, Ryan. Take care. Thank you for having right. me on. You too. Take care.